Okay, so I just posted a series of videos. Y'all should go check them out. And in the video that I just posted, I was actually talking about Valentine's Day and the toxic female and why women should avoid, like naturally avoid bad advice. Because first of all, something I learned about bad advice is this. Anybody in your life who you know is an L is there to give you bad advice, to deter you and distract you and be that manifestation block from what it is you truly desire. Yes, manifestation blocks are your thoughts, actions and feelings, all programming and conditioning by the enemy, whoever the fuck the enemy is. I'm still actually I don't really think the enemy is really a who or it could be a who, who knows. But whatever the case may be, they show up as people in your life. And those people naturally create blocks to deter you from what it is and who it is and all the situations you need to experience the opportunities that you're literally begging God for. Because nothing, you never should beg for anything. When you have to beg for it, that means that there's some sort of lack holding you back from fully experiencing whatever it is that you want. And in this case, I'm talking about Valentine's Day because already we're seeing all the advice from the women. Don't chase a tract. This is the type of guy you want, blah, 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 blah. And as a deity, I'm saying stop listening to those toxic females because those women have never in their life been in a healthy relationship, most importantly with themselves. For all the people that are gonna be like, are you married? Are you in relationships? Fuck off. The most important relationship anybody has in their life is with themselves. If you can't love yourself going around like a chicken without a head, searching for a partner, you're never going to find that person. And I know it's something that everybody hears. I love myself. I take myself to the spa. I go to expensive restaurants. I do this, that, and the third. No, but it is requiring of you to healthily be involved in your life <laughs> and what does a healthy involvement in your life look like it looks like the capability to be alone so that you can foster an independent self of sense of self so that when you do get into a relationship you you are able to be codependent from a healthy standpoint on your with your man and that's what men want men desire women who will lean on them because it makes them feel like a man, yes, but also because it strengthens his resolve. It makes him know that you're only pouring into his cup because that's what he wants at the end of the day. A man is providing everything and protecting you and being that powerhouse in your life, that light in your life from a masculine standpoint and expression that a lot of women don't know because he wants you to pour into his cup because without that water, Without that heart energy, without that magma that is love, he's not going to be able to do anything. And that's why we see a lot of men today just L's in life. They're L's in life because they feel unseen. And the way that a man will feel seen is by... Thank you guys, I appreciate it. The way that a man will feel seen is by you pouring into him in ways that he can't find externally, in ways that work can't do for him in ways that any of the things that men naturally gravitate towards in life don't do for him because that's what a woman is supposed to be but as I've talked before several times about how it all starts from the mother the womb most wombs are not healthy wombs because of trauma and narcissism and all sorts of things they carry that on throughout life and they develop this sense of self that keeps them from being the initial good seed that they were now we know that most people we you just have to be real not everybody is the best okay and by the best i mean not everybody like a lot of people suck like i'm just going to be real about that but we do know that with proper education with the proper consciousnesses around who are promoting the fact that people can change because not everybody was born bad. Not everybody was born evil. Not everybody was born with this sense to harm people, to, to 
I'm alive people, honestly, not everybody was like that. But because of this group think and magnetism and hypnotic rhythm and things of that nature, it's hard and difficult for people to be the gods that they are. And this isn't just a melanated thing. This is everybody has the capability. And what is God power? Well, I suggest everybody go watch the new Tarzan on Netflix. That is the epitome of God power. The fact that he grew up in the wild where he had to run off those natural instincts. And that's one of the problems with the consciousnesses of the world. The ones who really want everybody to feel low and down and out and depressed is that if more people knew that they could be Tarzan-like, the world would be crazy. And imagine if more men knew that they could be Tarzan-like. Oh my God, women would, we would drop all our smutty novels and we would, we would just be out there like underwear in the air, <laughs> you know, like, like it's a Drake concert or something because that's what we desire and that's what we're looking for. But again, when women are being fed this toxic advice about you have to wait for him, you have to do this. And I'm not saying be an aggressive woman that's not what i'm saying i'm saying being aggressive and loving yourself so that you're able to naturally put yourself out there in ways that naturally attract better people in general yet also better partners so that we can create better offspring in the world and have healthier wombs and healthier environments for everybody to thrive so that's what you should really go into valentine's day about don't be the annoying guy that thinks it's a corporate thing. You don't want to spend money, whatever. If that's who you genuinely are, then I'm not talking about you. You can be alone on Valentine's Day or, or you can gaslight whatever women <laughs> you need to gaslight to feel like a man. But I'm talking about the women and men out there who are genuinely looking for love. Nothing's wrong with looking for love. I mean, if something was wrong with it, it wouldn't be like the trillions of dollar business that it is, right? Um, books that I recommend, um, there's a book called Brutal, The Brutal Prince. That's a good book. Um, Heartbreaker, or not Heartbreaker, Icebreaker. That's a good book. Um, and then, oh, Praise. That's another one too. Um, I have my books stored somewhere. I would bring them out, but just look them up. I bet you could Google like Smutty Books Praise, Smutty Books The Brutal Prince. Oh, I do know The Brutal Prince is by Sophia Lark. I do know that. And then Heartbreaker or Icebreaker is by Hannah Grace. But I don't remember the other lady's name, but those are really good. I'm really into this TikTok era of smutty books. I I would live at Barnes & Noble if I could. <laughs> Um, let's see. Hello, hello, everybody. No, we're, this year is about making physical everything you truly want. It's not about dating 20 million guys it's not about how many people are in your DMs because that's not real. It's not going anywhere. Realness is complete. Realness is wholeness. If you can't say that person in your DMs, you've been in a relationship for real with that person, you met that person in real life, y'all took it further than a few emojis, like that's not real. And people are going around believing this. Like people are really going around believing that the people in their dms are actual contenders if they haven't taken it far i understand the beauty of living in a virtual or of being online the beauty of being online is that we can meet every we can you can be in mexico and be talking to somebody in timbuktu that's awesome but there's this fear in that distance there's this fear that oh and their excuses what if he's too short what if he's not this what if he's not that what if da 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 da, da? But you have to take that risk. Nothing's wrong with it. This is how I view L's. L's to me are stories. There are certain L's that you don't need to experience in life. There are certain L's that you just need to run away from. But if they're L's like you took a risk on love, that's a fun story to tell. 
a lot of stories I tell on my page are fun L's. <laughs> and when I tell the stories to people, they're thinking like, whoa, that was so cool. Oh my God, a near death experience. Whoa, how did that happen? Blah, blah, blah. Because I was willing to take the risk. Like I was willing to jump off the cliff and I didn't care what people had to say about it. Because the worst sort of humans in life are the ones who take your L and turn it into something so that you're scared to ever take a risk. But what? why did you talk to that person in the first place? Just to gaslight yourself and gaslight them? Because when you really think about it, all this, all these games that people play with each other when it comes to love to be superior and y'all are both inferior. Y'all are both losers. Y'all both don't want what you're, you're just wasting each other's time, especially your time, because you're going to be the one in regret. Like I, for myself, like I, I said in my videos that I posted today, y'all should go check them out. I purposely never had a Valentine. I know there were guys that wanted to, but again, for me, they, they make it seem like, oh, if you're a woman that doesn't have a lot of men approaching you, you're a loser, you're not going anywhere in life, you, you're not marriageable, this and that. But the way I see it is, that's protection. If I'm naturally repelling losers, why would I feel a type of way about that? <laughs> I feel great about that. I'm not the girl that needs a hundred guys fawning over me every single day to feel validated and i'm not the girl that needs a hundred girls around me to feel like i'm a queen think about it think about why you really are not attracting what you want it doesn't always have to be because you're not doing something right you could possibly be doing everything right there's so many possibilities and ways of thinking about things so I chose to go into this year. This year is the year of eight. This year is the year of physicality. This year is the year of everything becoming real like wood, real like a tree, hard. It's about physical touch. It's about finally removing the barriers that are all lies in our head because of one L or a few or maybe a lot. I've had a lot of L's in life, man. And I made it here and I'm winning and I'm happy. And it's W after W after W. You have to be willing to take those L's so that you can get to the greatest L of all, which is love. And that's the other thing, too. You know how sad it is hearing people talk about love as if it's some people said love doesn't exist. The whole world runs off love. Sure, the love that majority of people are experiencing this day, these days are hate, specifically from self. A lot of it not self-imposed. Another thing, too. Stop blaming yourself for every L in your life. Because a lot of the times when you, you delve into spirituality, you know, it's like everything's your fault, blah, blah, blah. That's from the toxic perspective. Everything is you because, yes, you chose it because you came here to learn or this school. But at the same time, you can look at it from the being standpoint and just be like, yo, that person played me. That person hurt me. That is why I'm the way that I am today. Like, that's very healthy and that is very okay. So think about it for real. Why is it that I don't have a Valentine this year? Why is it that if I have had Valentines, they've always sucked? Why is it when I do Valentines, they always give the most? And that's another thing, too, that I want women to understand, like, the world is really catered for women and women don't get it. It's because toxic females don't want you to get it. If you knew how catered to you were, were if you continue to view the world in this very obscene patriarchy standpoint that toxic feminism wants you to view it, you will never be happy. You will never attract the tall, handsome man. You will never attract the wealthy man. You will never attract the man that really is in it for you. Because men naturally want to be that way. Why do you think they spend, if a man can spend money at the club, if he can spend money on, you know, friends only girls, if he can do all this stuff, why isn't he spending money on you? <laughs> it's because of your beliefs. Men are naturally generous people that you see them being generous with their careers. You see them being generous with their friends. You see them being generous with women that 
as his girlfriend or as his mom or his partner, whatever the case may be, you're kind of like, but why not me? Because you've created blockages for him not to. That's really what they mean by submission. They mean women who accept their gifts and accept their love and accept their hand. And a lot of women these days I've noticed don't even like to kiss or hug or anything. And a lot of men are really watery. They're really affectionate. They want to cuddle and do sweet things. But when you're over here telling him harder, faster, this, that, and the third, and in his mind, he's thinking, yo, I want to be gentle and I, I want to take my time, but you're, you, don't, you, you don't want that and I want to please you, okay. And then it's like, why are my relationships not working? Because it's like, again, the toxic female wants to deter you from what is truly for you, which is a happy marriage, a happy home. And marriage is whatever you want marriage to be. <laughs> okay, it could be a very long term, steady relationship with children, with everything where there's a ring involved, but maybe you didn't want to do it on paper. You know, it's all up to you. I believe in the completion. I believe in the contract. I believe in everything. I'm not necessarily traditional, but I do understand the symbolism and the divinity of everything like that. But then again, that depends on what ch- what type of chapter you want to attract in your life. It's really not that hard. Like I'm the other day I was going so I'm a psychic, okay? And I get a lot of impressions from a lot of different men, especially celebrity men, who are looking for a woman like me and they're praying to God, where is she? Oh my God. We're seeing each other in the dream state. We're doing all this stuff, okay? And one guy in particular has been coming to me a lot and like showing me a lot of his family trauma and all sorts of things. And he's really popular online. And the way he presents is as if his whole life is perfection, but it's really not. So I got this impression. I'm like, okay, I'm going to go on to his Instagram and I'm going to like like a picture or something to get his attention. And I... um. I'm going onto his Instagram and boom, it's like, God was like, what is she going to do today? <laughs> is she going to fall for the toxic female BS? And that's actually where I got the the inspiration for this talk. There was a woman, she has blonde hair, her name's Cece, and she was talking about magnetism and she likes to use cups and waters to show all this stuff and annoying things. So I'm looking at this, I'm like, yo, this is a full blown distraction. This is toxic femininity. This is toxic females trying to keep me away from doing my job because women are taught, oh, don't like his picture. He needs to like your picture first. He, But this is my fucking job, bro. <laughs> like, This is not, I'm not doing this for his attention in a romantic sense. I'm not doing this for anything. But I literally looked at, the, I was watching that video and I was like, yo, man, oh my God, am I going to be thirsty if I like his pic? I did DM him. I, I did do all this stuff and everything like, Women, what is the point of being beautiful if you don't use it to your advantage? Just for you to sit around while all the butterfaces are collecting all the men? Like, what? Like, I'm just supposed to sit here and some guy's supposed to randomly find my Instagram and, and then, like, start DMing me. Like, that's crazy. I know what life looks like when you just wait. And it's not a fun life. I know what life looks like when you just sit there and like guys are in your DMs. They're L's. They're not even worthy guys because they can sense that you're one of those women who doesn't chase. You attract. Like this is what it means to be transgendered, to be able to be balanced, to be able to transition from masculinity to femininity and be masculine when you need to and be feminine when when you don't, you know, like it, that's just the world that we're in now. So approach valentine's day from that perspective approach valentine's day i'm not talking about being aggressive okay again it's about being assertive it's about and that's the point of being online as well too this is the perfect place to be yourself if you're not going to be yourself here how are you going to be yourself in real life that's the problem that i see with a lot of these celebrity women that a lot of women look up to and be jealous of because that's what they want They want you to look at their pages and be jealous. They want you to look at their pages and be jealous because they're energy vampires and they're stealing from you. They're stealing from you all the energy that you could use to attract a healthy, wealthy man. And when I talk about high value and wealth in a man, what I first off mean is heart 
And I'm not just talking about men who are out here insecure talking about, oh, I'm rich in character and don't even have a dollar in their bank account. No, I'm talking about true love, man, the ability to be empathic, the the true balance of their masculinity and femininity, emotional intelligence. There's a lot of guys out here. We see a lot of celebrity guys, singers for the perfect example, example are male singers. How are they writing all this beautiful music? Sure, they might have camps who write the music for them, but even then to the songwriter, because it's in his heart. But if you don't present to him the challenge to be that beyond the beautiful songs or poetry or words, you know, there's no there's no point. Where do you think, like, guys aren't just saying these words to say them. A lot of women just stop at the words, but you have to be a challenge enough for them to want to put those words into action. Valentine's Day this year is more than just the flower. It's more than just a day. Valentine's Day is every day. And, and yes, we appreciate the day, but we also show love for the fact that love is an everyday phenomenon oh hey biz what's up thank you thank you nixon see what i'm saying man nobody has time for these men wobble wobby wobble it's you you are a problem. I'm not going to say you are the problem. Well, actually, no, I will say you are the problem because the, the issue is that we are presented with different consciousnesses. And because people find some people, not everybody, but those people who find what I'm saying to be unbelievable are only creating more problems for themselves. Because again, this is a new age this is a new year, this is a new time. And if you don't use your imagination to its greatest extent, which is infinite expansion, obviously when I say things like wealth, only a low vibrational man would see it as just about money. But also I'm not gonna excuse you because men need to have money, you do. We don't have time for sugar uh, sugar babies out here. Women don't have time. If, uh, this is what I will say. For men out there who think it's cute to be a sugar baby to a woman, that already is a toxic, imbalanced relationship. It does not make any sense. That's not the way it should be. A woman should never be taking care of a man financially in any way. The only way a woman should be taking care of a man is emotionally. That's pretty much it. And that's a that's a big pretty much it. If she's financially taking care of you and emotionally taking care of you, you're not a man anymore. And that's what hurts you. And that's where it turns into abuse. Because you're not doing your job. I'm tired of people like like emasculating men more like it's not okay <laughs> it's not right like as a man you should have a steady income and you will find someone in your tax bracket tax bracket to to love you like don't reach for the stars when you can't afford the stars and that's where practicality comes into spirituality i'm not a spiritualist who's going to tell you like if you just keep dreaming about that rap career it will come one day you need to know as a man if you are a good enough rapper or not. And that needs to be clear. <laughs> and then if it is a possibility for you and you can achieve that because you actually are talented and you will know that if you are tapped into your femininity and or if you have a good woman by your side, whether it's a mom or a sister or a wife or a girlfriend or whatever, a teacher, who knows what she is. If you have those things around you, which is why I understand why a lot of talented men, I won't just say celebrity men, but a lot of talented men, a lot of wealthy men do keep women around them. It's just what type of women do you have around you? Andrew Tate likes to show off like, oh, I have all these women praying for me, but clearly they're not praying enough. <laughs> clearly they're not praying enough if, he, if he's over here worried every day if he's going to live or not. 
And clearly they're not good women and clearly they're not good wombs and clearly they're not for you. Why men like Andrew Tate choose helpless women is because those women allow him to do the nonsense that he's doing. If I was there, I would have been like, bro, this got, this has to stop. Like you've been given a platform where you actually have sense. Like he has sense and I'm not a hater. He does make sense. But the problem is when he starts getting nonsensical because he has daddy and mommy issues. And those daddy and mommy issues fall. He even has color issues. He's biracial, constantly rejects melanated women for these Russian, no offense, B-I-M-B-O-S, no offense, women. This is what y'all are looking up to. That's how come when I look at guys like Fresh and Fit, they really irritate me because when they talk about their moms, I'm like, I know the type of moms you have. Women that want to control you by you ending up in horrible relationships like they did so that you can be all attached to your mommy. I talk about this so heavily because on both sides, there's toxic males, there's toxic females, but I've just completely given up on the toxic female. I'll talk about them and I'll talk about myself. I talk about myself because I'm the type of woman that I want men to be with. And I'm not too humble to say that. That's, that's the, the toxic male and toxic female wants beautiful, gorgeous, intelligent, kind, triple threat and beyond women like me to not acknowledge that. So that y'all can get stuck in your hell loops <laughs> with women that you hate and then they turn you gay. And those women don't like to believe that. Oh, it wasn't, it wasn't me. <laughs> I'm so good in between the sheets. I'm this, I'm that. Well, clearly you weren't if he had to go the other way. Well, a lot of people want to come in this live. No, you can't come in the live. So, so anyway. Women like me only exist when a woman like me speaks up and has the confidence to be so bold. And only a weak man will criticize that or judge that in any way. Stop reading Cosmos. Stop going in those wrong directions. Because like I said, I have left the toxic feminine alone. I know those women very well. And if you want to know about them, DM me or go watch the videos in my page. But I'm focused on men because as Oshun, yes, I'm saying that, okay? The one celebrity out there who keeps trying to profess that and doesn't do anything about it is a lie. As this deity, I understand the importance of vitality in men. I understand the importance of men having good seed. <laughs> like, what are we doing? What is the point of spreading it all over the place? Even if you're one of those people who believes in polyamory or whatever nonsense that they're trying to push in the world. What's the point of doing all that if you're just creating offspring that is more of an L than you are? That doesn't make sense. Men need to have the tools and they don't have the tools because toxic females have made them believe that they know everything when they don't. A smart man knows how to attract smart women for more than just bedroom activities. He attracts them for business partnerships for growth, for friendship. Like someone asked me the other day, can men and women be friends? And I think I said no at the time, but that's the thing with growth, you change. Yes, they can. Honestly, in life, if you're not sexually attracted to the themes you do, the people you interact with, are those even real good companions? And are you a truly strong human? or a truly strong being if you can't control those urges. I'm the type of person that can be friends with anyone, but also I'm the rare person. I'm not as sexually attracted to everything that I see. I have discretion. So, so I am very monogamous in everything that I do, even in friendship. 
Like that's how intense of a person I am. I'm, I'm the type of person, if we're friends, you're my only friend. And that's the whole, that's the way that it goes. If you're my partner in life, you're my only partner. Yet I also understand that I have to attract other people so that we can really build a community. And usually, like I said, the undertones of everything we do from a healthy perspective are usually sexual. You just have to have the strength like you you have to have the self-centeredness to know like okay this is my business partner i'm in a committed relationship that's a no go i mean that should be common sense but people like to push boundaries just to see what they can get away with and i'm not that type of person i'm not here to get away with nonsense i'm here to get away with what should have been gotten away with in the first place because it's true <laughs> like Yo, man, like when I have these conversations, they really make me laugh a lot because it's like, how is this not common sense for people? How are things this simple, not common sense? Why would I go and mess up a good thing with some, like imagine, this is why it's so important to be healthy. This is why it's so important for, why it was so important for me to spend all Valentine's days leading up to this one alone. Because I had to have that self-love so that I could be courageous to walk into rooms by myself. That when I'm in a room with a bunch of big men, I stand up tall as the big woman I am, beautiful, makeup done, everything. No one can say anything about me. Like that's, that's what we're supposed to be doing so that we experience love in its fullness because again love is beyond romance it's beyond sexualness it's platonic it's agape it's familial it's business wise too your business partners could be your family if you allowed them they say don't mix business and pleasure but that's from a toxic standpoint if y'all are able to both have healthy boundaries you can go get lunch with your business partner and it's okay it doesn't turn into this weird thing you will naturally attract healthier people in your life. You will naturally attract a partner that you want to be committed to. Why would you be with someone just to lock them up and trap them and then go out and do other nonsensical things? That doesn't make sense. But this is maturity. And I've come to realize like a lot of people lack maturity. Maturity goes beyond paying bills and having children and buying cars and all of these keynote things that people have made to be such a big deal when those are the lesser deals the bigger deals are what have you accomplished in love are you in a full-blown relationship with yourself do you love yourself so so much and what healthy relationships do you have in your life and a healthy relationship doesn't go by how many years you've known somebody that's also something too that i never understood like oh me and this person have been friends since kindergarten but it looks to me like y'all should have stopped being friends in second grade <laughs> that doesn't mean anything there's people out here who have known each other for a month and their loyalty is unbreakable Versus people that have known you growing up and all they do is hold you back and everything like that. The worst sort of friendships are the friends that tell you, promise me you won't leave me. Promise me you won't take that job. Promise me. And those are the people that you've known since childhood. I was always someone, I've never been someone like, if I knew you in childhood, there's a reason I don't know you right now. You're the one stalking me. You're the one looking at me, but I don't care about you because the person you knew in childhood is nowhere near the person you're seeing today. I don't have time for people to bring up childhood L's. Again, things you should watch out in people, especially people that have known you since you were younger. They know how to manipulate you. They know how to manipulate love like no other, especially when you were always the giver in the friendship and this usually changes like around college time so in your 20s 30s when you start realizing yo why am i still hanging out with all the same people from freaking 
my hometown <laughs> like why don't i have new friends why is everything still the same and then you start dressing different you start talking different you start posting differently online you start doing different things and then those friends are the ones who are like yo you changed billy this is weird why are you acting different why aren't you giving me why can't i take from you anymore what's going on billy Billy starts to, to, to double crisscross, confuse his whole mind. Again, with the toxic advice, because what do the toxic advisors tell you? You've known them for a long time, you know, give them the benefit of the doubt, you know, give them a chance. The, I'm talking about Valentine's Day from the other aspects of love now. Because you, you do, it, Valentine's isn't just about your girlfriend or your boyfriend or your wife or your husband or whatever the relationship may be. It's also about friends. I'm the type of friend who likes to give valentines. <laughs> so like, evaluate your friendships too. Ev evaluate your partnerships. Watch the way people talk to you. Watch the way people look at you. Especially for people who are in their 30s, because in your 30s is when it's the most asexual time of your life. And it shows physically. So when you start making those loud changes and choices in your life and people are trying to make it seem like you should be in a mental hospital just because you're like, I can't look at the world in the same way anymore. It just doesn't fit me, which is also why I don't suggest getting married young, because you're more permanently yourself, still expanding and still growing, but you're more a there's like a core to you, a, a true solid core in your 30s. If you've done all the healing work and you've done taken all the L's in your 20s and you've cleaned it all up and now everything's a W. And then in your 30s, that's when you really date and that's when you really explore because now you're not dating just to like have the numbers. You're dating really and you're exploring really because you know that maybe in the next like five plus years you're ready to and it's not about settling down that's also wrong verbiage it's about you're ready to grow in a new way you're ready to grow with people more wordage that people use that are barriers i always felt a type of way about marriage or relationships like a lot of guys do come to me with offers and a lot of them are l's they're they're l's it's not because they don't have money they're l's because of what they're wanting from me. They see a bird and they want to cage it. And like you can't you can't cage me, bro. You can't do that. Guys are girls are just afraid of that too. Like I as a woman do not want to be caged. I don't want to be cuffed. I don't want to be shackled. I don't want any of that. And for a guy when a woman says that it's like, "Oh, I got to I got to trap her even harder because she wants to be out here with all the guys." No, that's not it cuz when you found me, where are they? <laughs> like I said when I started this video, I'm not the type. I repel a lot of people. So I myself would hear those words and I would think trap, 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 trap. And I would tell them off the rip like, yo, that's not for me. And it would offend them because, again, they're low vibrational. So it's like, oh, I can't dominate her. I can't control her. I'm the submissive one in this situation. I have to run away. So hearing those words of settle down would fear me away from wanting to be with anybody because settling down means what? You're settling down. Like you're going down. You're downgrading. There's no elevation. There's no nothing. You're going to be stuck in a house. The next thing you know is a woman just pumping out kids and that's not how that guy found me. I wasn't pumping out kids when he found me. I was online having a good time, being beautiful, chatting it up with people about consciousness that I care about, that I love, unconditional love. But you want me to go, you want me to revert from all the work that I've done? That's why it's important to love yourself first because that's how a lot of people in general get trapped. Someone presents themselves very prettily. And that's another thing that I talk about for men. Y'all have to get y'all have to get in tune with your femininity. You're it doesn't make you gay. Like y'all gotta get out of that one. Like seriously. And even guys that claim 
that they're not phobic this phobic that a little bit of you is because of the things that I'm talking about if it's so if it's cool for a woman to be in her masculine and her feminine why isn't it cool for a man to be in his masculine and his feminine that means you're a balanced healthy mature human being femininity is about intuition femininity is about loving yourself it's about going inside it's about seeing you that's why so many men feel unseen and that's why so many men go the other way because if they can't see themselves and they can't attract women who see them maybe another man will see me maybe a trans asexual person will see me and even then it feels empty and then even then it's confusing because it's like oh my god where did i go and then they can't tell anybody because society has made it seem like, oh my God, it's not, it's not kosher. It's not cool. And then they've created this whole downward spiral for themselves that in the beginning, it didn't need to be that way. They just needed to see a woman in their life that was like, okay, yo, I see you. I respect you. I honor you. I value the man that you are. Now go. <laughs> like go do what you need to do. And I, I'm not a crutch for you. That's not what I'm here to do. We're not each other's crushes, but we're here to grow and expand together. There's a woman, um, there's this guy, he's like one of those billionaires who talks a lot um, about how to be a billionaire and how to invest. I, I see his face right now. He has salt and pepper hair, he's white. He's really popular with a lot of, like especially in the urban world, he's very popular. Um, he, his wife is also very popular. And this woman taught me something that I will never forget. She was talking about how her husband, it was during the 2008 crash, stock market crash, and lost everything. They were sitting in a big house, no money, because all of it was investments. And that's another thing. Don't put all your money in investments. You need to have some some hard cash, okay? Don't be the fool to put your money in someone else. Invest it in yourself. You you would do better getting a Manny and Petty every week than investing in some Wall Street shit, okay? So he's in his office crying for like three days. And the woman was like, oh no. <laughs> you are not gonna be sitting up here crying? Like what? No. So she goes into that office and she tells him, she like comes, you know, touches his shoulder, everything, consoles him as the woman she is pouring into his heart, unconditional love. And then she like slaps him on the shoulder, gets in front of him and like, and she's like, yo, get up. And he's looking at her like, like, oh my God, what? Get up. I lost everything. Like she said, get up right now and go figure out what you're going to do. You're a talented, talented man who has made billions. And just because you lost those billions doesn't mean you can't do it again. And he was just looking at his wife in awe, like wiping the tears off his face. Like, oh my God, like she's right. What am I doing over here crying? She allowed him to be in his feels, in his feminine, but as the woman who understands when it's time to be dominant and submissive, she straight up was just like, no, bruh, not today. We are not doing this. We have kids. We have things we need to take care of. This is what it means to be a homemaker. That's what it means to be a woman of the domestic arts. You know what time it is. You know when it's time to be like all princess and, you know, trophy and caregiver. And then, you know, when it's time to like buck up and be like, yo, like yeah. my king of the castle cannot be out here as an L. Like we, we can't go out like this. Like that's crazy. And when she said that, I was like, now I know what direction I'm going in. Now I know the type of like the type of woman I am is a valid woman and i've always taken that with me because the, the toxic female allows men to wallow allows men allows them to just take l after l after l because she's an energy vampire it gives her joy and it gives her pleasure to be that way <sighs> okay okay let's see thank you rebel scumbag 
Obama West Maureen is yo I saw you being a hater Obama West so I saw your first comment you were a hater bruh you were a hater but I see you change thank you Obama West I appreciate you <laughs> Mur, blah 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 <laughs> You're funny. I do notice you, Obama West. What the fuck? I have to flow. I can't stop my flow for the comments, all right? Jesus. I, I, and Mer, ugh. What the F, bro? You're an L fan. <laughs> what? And you're not even fan. You're just, you've just been hating too much in the comments. Like, take my advice and go get a life. Um, but anyway, men need to see this, like, you should never be alone in anything you're doing as a man. I don't like that narrative for men. That's not fair. That's not okay. And that's not right. Why do women have to have a whole squad? We have we have a whole glam squad. We have God. We have the divine. We have the, the deities. We can be goddess this, goddess that, high priestess this, high priestess that. And a lot of women are not that. But men can't even like... You can't even say you're Oshun, you can't say you're God, you can't you can't be anything. Like you can't experience femininity safely. And and that's also why men feel like, oh, spirituality is woo-woo. No, that's a projection. Because you wish you could hold a crystal openly and be as courageous as a woman who talks about all these things and everybody just like, which, 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 which this. You wish you could do that. But because you have these weird patriarchal beliefs about yourself, you, you, you can't. So you say astrology is fake and you say spirituality is this and spirituality is that when you wish you could believe in God the way I do. Men need to know it's okay. Believe in God for real. Like really believe in God beyond going to church. Because I know even then a lot of men still don't believe in God. A lot of men hold the Quran like they believe in God, but they don't believe in God. A lot of men go to church and hold their little Bibles. They don't believe in that. Look, where we see all the priests that are coming out lately about their whole covert affair life going on because they never believed in God because they had all these deep resentments inside them. And then they married these women that were supposedly godly, but wasn't giving them any joy. Like y'all need to stop believing that you need to choose. It's There's this thing called the Madonna W-H-O-R-E complex. And it's basically men have this choice that they have to make. And because they've generically separated women into the prude or the, the, uh, the P-R-O-S-T-I-T-U-T-E, they struggle, which is why a lot of men cheat and they get away with cheating. Because the toxic female inherently knows that and inherently understands that, okay, I don't have everything he needs, wants, or desires, but I'm benefiting off him, which is why a lot of men are also scared of women because the toxic female does this and they do so very shamelessly. So since I don't have everything, I'll just stay and he can do whatever he wants, which is, again, pushing a false, horrible narrative that is creating bad seed. A lot of men are suffering from erectile dysfunction because they're just with the wrong woman. You don't need all those medicines. I'm telling you right now, if you were in front of the right woman, boom, everything would be up. And you'd be like, bro, I thought, I thought something was wrong. And also, if you're with the right woman, she would give you the herbs and things that you need to naturally feel that way because a lot of the times with men it's really an emotional theme it's really a a confidence theme it's really like whatever goals that you may have in mind they're not coming to fruition thing and you just need that proper push you need that proper woman that proper leader in your life who will encourage you and who will tell you, yo, that was an L, bro, or yo, that was a W, or you don't need to go to the doctor, you're okay, you're fine. It, none of it is toxic, it's all healthy. Y'all need to see that. Like, I don't know who men look up to in the world. That's another thing with men. It's like men have to secretly do all these things that women can naturally do. Um, 
there was a time where I used to look up to people, but I love myself so much. I look up to myself. I look at myself in the mirror. And that's what I want men to get. It, for a man, it usually takes a beautiful woman to tell you what to do and you'll do it. <laughs> okay, like really that's like if I'm going to be beautiful, I'm going to be beautiful in a way that creates a world that I want to see. And I'm going to use it. I enjoy my beauty, but I also know men enjoy my beauty too. So I'm going to help y'all enjoy my beauty by enjoying it in a way that would actually make me want to be with you. <laughs> And I'm not a liar that, and I say that because like, again, men need to see women who are honest. Like you need to know all of these things. You need to know that to get a woman like me, you have to be wealthy in spirit and you have to be wealthy in your fucking pockets. Period. That's just the way that it's going to go. And men need that sort of inspiration. They need something to aspire to. Who do? That's why I'm saying who do men have to aspire to really? The president of this country is an L. Majority of the women that the patriarchy have chosen to shine and be examples, SEX symbols, are Ls. So what are y'all looking at? <laughs> like, really, what are you looking at? You're looking at Barbies, LOL, and you're looking at caricatures of divine masculinity. And nothing is wrong with patriarchy. We all love a daddy. We do love that. But what type of daddy is it? Is it a daddy that makes his son feel irrelevant? Like white Jesus and that bullshit biblical God? Or are you looking at men that actually encourage you to step out of your comfort zone? It, it encourage you to be led by the feminine. Encourage you to go into your heart and cry once in a while. I'm not the type to reject a man who cries. I will reject a man who cries because he's a he's playing victim. That's for sure. But if if you can't cry in front of me, then what are we doing here? If you can't lean on me, what are we doing here? And it's sad to hear a lot of men in front of their women, especially these podcasters lately. They have their their woman on the show and she's like the, you know, the the side character on the podcast and she's just there just nodding and yesing and everything and and her for his friends and yo guys i'm gonna tell you right now there's two things you can tell about a bad person for you in a relationship you know you have a good girlfriend or a good wife or partner whatever if your friends like her but here's the caveat do they like her because she's actually good for you? Or do they like her because, or do they not like her because she's good for you? That's something that y'all need to, y'all need to be able to better figure out, which is that femininity thing. Because I understand for men, their friends are very important for them. Brotherhood is very important. And I'm not the woman who's going to pull a man away from whatever his family naturally is. Women are naturally way more independent than men. It just is what it is. We live in a world where most women don't get along because we're not supposed to fucking get along. It's just the way that it fucking goes, okay? Um, I would love to have female friends, but at the end of the day, as a highly beautiful woman, I understand that that is a very, very rare thing. Now, for men, though, men can have... 20,000 friends <laughs> because the way men view friendship is different from the way women view friendship. But again, do you have friends around you that promote your well-being or do you have friends around you who are jealous and leeches like most wealthy men do? Because most wealthy men, the men that are sleeping with them at night are their friends. And I'm not talking about in the gay way. I'm talking about literally they live in the same home as their best friend like <laughs> that's what i'm saying is unwell but anyway back to the wife thing so in this one podcast that i watch from time to time um psychically he has reached out to me too it's funny like he really does not like his wife um but and they're not even really married um she wants to get married but he doesn't believe in god because of all the trauma and things that he's gone through throughout his life 
and she doesn't even encourage him to because he is so unattractive to her like he does things purposefully to just push her away but she doesn't get it and she's one of those women who is very unaffectionate and just is very she's not motherly she's not feminine she's just a toxic female in general on the show he is always throwing shade just basically saying like she's not a wife at all to me we're just in it because at this point we have kids she trapped him with all the kids she keeps having kids he doesn't want to keep having kids like it's just a very horrible situation but he got with her because he's a black man from the ghettos of california who when he finally came across this pretty light-skinned girl it was like the trophy of his life and he was the number he was the right man right hand man of a famous rapper at the time he felt like he was the guy he was this he was that and now i think they're like in it 10 plus years or something like that or actually i think it's like 15 years at this point four kids he's the only thing that gives him satisfaction in life is his podcast and the only time he enjoys his girlfriend is when they're drunk. So it's like, you don't want that kind of life, bro. You don't want that. Um, A lot of people watch negative podcasts just because it's feeding what they know uh last year i learned how to detox a lot of the negativity because also if you can sit through a video and watch the whole thing it's not always about your attention span it's literally your brain telling you this is boring it's not stimulating at all and what the conditioning wants people to be stimulated by is negativity which is why people are so propagated by cheating conversations or conversations about why he's the problem and you're not the problem or she's the problem and you're not the basically no solution media is what entertainment has become but entertainment should be things that help you figure your life out and you can do that in really fun ways that's why i love movies movies are so symbolic there's things that i watch in movies that i'm like yo like i re today i finished watching the tarzan movie movie which is why i mentioned it earlier and i don't like a certain uh, things about it like the fact that they're trying to make the white man the god figure still pushing that white jesus narrative i'm um, cgiing him to be really big using africa as a scapegoat to push the white man as the savior of the world narrative yes that exists yeah also though the bigger message that i got from it is that god power is real and sometimes i naturally doubt that within myself and that's something that i'm moving out of like i'm not i'm no longer playing coy about my goddess power it is what it is i said it i'm god get over it, it bothers you get out you're not 5d enough and above for me period but i do like like the rosary held his neck at the end of the movie and with his god power he broke it with just his neck it shows that naturally we are animalistic in the best ways he grew up with the mangani a specific sort of gorilla and they taught him how to be wild and his mother was a gorilla it shows you that nurturing doesn't have to be in this physical form. You can learn to be a mother or a father or a being in so many sort of different situations and God will lead you along the way. And that's what men are missing. Just because your dad wasn't around, just because your mom was a bitch, just because that your first love did those things to you that are honestly really petty men hold grudges for no reason it's like too long of a grudge but that's because of that toxic femininity in y'all that y'all aren't letting out in healthy ways so you take it out by being mean to women and you know the sad part is y'all are mean to the wrong women and you should feel guilty and bad about that a lot of men not a lot of men 
let me say this, a specific sort of man, the evil man, is naturally in opposition of me and naturally very mean to me because of all that unhealed toxic femininity in him. I represent the feminine in him that he wishes he could be, which is strong and vocally, emotionally vocal and free spirited and unconditionally loving and generous with my heart. That's where these opposing things come together. My masculinity allows me to be that way. If I was a feminine who only believed in nurturing my feminine, I would be sitting in a corner waiting on a man, waiting on Prince Charming. But if men understood that rather than forcing this false sense of masculinity onto this world, I'm a tree and I'm unbreakable when the whole tree is hollow. Like instead of doing that and just naturally flowing into that femininity and seeing where it takes you. That's something that I learned in my spirituality as well. I had to get over this fear of diving deep into the waters that is God. God is watery. God is a water sign. And this goes beyond astrology in the traditional way. God is the moon. People forget that the moon exists. If you ever look up at the sky, the moon is always there. The moon is never not there. It's just you notice the sun first because it's so big and it's so bright, or at least it looks so big. But have you ever thought that the moon is bigger than the sun? Because naturally, feminine energy is stronger, which is why we're seeing men so heavily in their toxic femininity these days. Men are so heavily toxic feminine. It's disgusting. It's so annoying and it's so disgusting because I'm like, yo, you're pettier than the bitches that I knew. Like, why are you this petty? Because your mom told you that you couldn't cry? Social media is becoming, uh, from, from me, from my standpoint, the social media that I attract is healthy, it's balanced. I get entertainment in all ways. I get education. I get stuff that I would consider is just like for fun, activity. I get beauty. I get travel I get a good mix of things it's all about you what do you want to see like I love to see beautiful men I love to see beautiful women I love to hear voices so I predominantly get themes with people who at least give off the impression that they are whole healthy human beings because that's something that the world is learning the world is learning that it's safe and it's okay. It's it's safe to be okay. That's what people are accepting. Like it's really okay to be happy. Like I know that people don't want you to be, and when you're happy, it seems like you're mental, but you're not mental. You're genuinely happy. I love seeing people genuinely smile. I love walking past a, a coffee shop and seeing a man and a woman holding hands as if they're the only two people in the world. I love that. I love seeing kids being able to play outside because their parents aren't scaring them away due to whatever nonsense they saw in the news. I love seeing peace. I love that. And I love that that's something that's becoming more natural. It needs to be. There was a time where I never really smiled. And you can go hear about my story on my page. But I have such a beautiful smile. Why wasn't I smiling? Because someone hated themselves therefore they projected that hate onto me whenever i'm doing my makeup whenever i'm doing anything it's i have the time to reminisce over life and certain thoughts flow into my mind they flow in and out and today especially i've been thinking about yo maureen how are you believing all these lies like you really believed you were ugly you really believed that you're not a star you really let these people guide you into misery you let misery guide you into more misery. And then because of that, all of it was untrue. You had to spend 10 years unraveling misery that wasn't yours. Like that's a hard L to transmutate into unconditional love. 
because it's literal, consistent forgiving yourself. Forgiving yourself for every time you believed a story that had nothing to do with you. And that's what men are afraid of. They're afraid of taking accountability for the L's that they've committed in their life. And the biggest L being that they couldn't see themselves, that they couldn't love themselves, that they could, couldn't just be who they are. You see, Marley, labels are important. And that's something that I came to terms with as well, too, because we do have to divine, def define things. We are divining as we live. Therefore, we have to define. <laughs> Thank you. Yo, heart, gray heart, everything everything applies everything is so important that's why i don't exclude any sort of consciousness i'm someone who believes that there is literally truth in everything it's just about being discerning enough to know what applies for you not to you for you what information out there will make you a better person will help you grow and you have to be real with yourself. Am I in the loop of toxic positivity? Do I need to get out of that loop? A lot of people are in that loop. It doesn't matter how many times you tell yourself you're beautiful in the mirror. If you're not beautiful, you're not beautiful. And you know those things that don't make you beautiful. We all know those things that don't make us beautiful. I knew the things that didn't make me beautiful. And yes, it was uncomfortable moving through those things. But again, it has to be balanced. Negativity is not all bad. Negativity is a good thing. That's why it exists. But how are you using that negativity? Are you using it to transmutate into more unconditional love for yourself to be the powerhouse you're meant to be? Or are you allowing it to succumb you to ways of life that were never for you in the beginning? People really need to think about it like that. Toxicity goes always. This is why labels are important. This is why defining things are important. Just don't put that period. Something I've stopped doing is putting periods in things. When something is like a period, you know, like we are no longer. You are my ex for a reason by period. Like dead that, seriously. But when it comes to like SE actuality, you can't put a period there. You can't even put a period on something like being transgender. You can't do that. Because that, that doesn't allow for more definitions. I've defined it differently than most people have. When I came out with the video, I, I said I said my sexuality, my sexuality is trans sexual. It was something where I, honestly a lot of people didn't question me at all because again, the people that naturally are attracted to me understand my intelligence, my genius. Yet there were some people who were like, what? And I made that video, honestly, I was prompted to make that video because people would come in my life, the L's of the world, the evils of the world would come in my life and be like, yo, did you get bottom surgery? Did you do this, that, and the third? And I was thinking like, okay, why is this coming? What do I need to see here? What's going on? And then I made the correlation of the fact that life is consistently transitioning between male and female, masculinity and femininity. And that flow, that fluidity of the male and female body and how, yes, we have differences, but yes, we are the same as well. This is why certain things have become so perverted. Like the other day I was on, or not the other day, like actually yesterday, I was on a corn website and the stuff I like to watch is usually really tame or it might not be tame, but for me, it's pretty tame. Um, and... Uh, I was on a video about exhibition and I scroll down and I see an ad. Um, I don't know if I can say this. I'm not even going to say that word. Let me just say um, trans asexual woman with another girl. And I was watching and I was like, yo, I see how this is interesting. Like I felt the click come into my head. 
I felt the intent of what they wanted. Like my mind, something I would naturally never gravitate towards. You see how like, like, um, marketing and everything comes into the play nothing i would naturally never watch but because it was in the lesbian section of things they threw it in there like oh maybe the mind won't notice what's being done here so i'm pausing i'm watching this ad and i'm like okay okay i see the turn on i see the click so i go search it up and while I'm doing it, my intuition's like, this is not for you. This is not for you. But me being a curious person about life, I go and I look for a similar video. I don't see it again. That's why it's an ad because it's beautifully done. And I click on one, it doesn't load. And then I just go away like, this is not for me. I'm not going to do this. And I'm thinking about this and I'm like, I feel the things that the media wants you to feel. Whoever is trying to push this LGBTQI a messaging from the toxic standpoint wants you to feel they want you to feel guilty for saying no so that you can think that you're something that you're not and blah 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 and it takes a strong will like mine to see through this so then i'm thinking what are they really doing out here and then i remember this one guy who um he watched that video and he dm'd me and he was like yo i could have sworn she wasn't but i mean hey whatever she is it's cool so eventually and it was like a brief conversation it was like a brief attraction i asked him i was like have you ever experienced any of that stuff before and he said no in a way where it's like no not physically but clearly his eyes have been on it so it clicked and I'm like, yo, this is how they trap men into this nonsense, bro. It's a difference between naturally being attracted to that sort of thing and then it being implanted to you because they don't want men to be masculine, masculine out here. <laughs> because they don't want men to be masculine out here. They, they're trying to tell a different story. So all in all is this, men, it's okay. Explore your femininity, okay?